Hey guys, Adib, the Texas Miner. This is my introduction to my setup. Uh, I, there was a lot of challenges when I first started mining, and this right here is the solution that I have found uh, to those many different variables uh, in my other videos. I'm just going to do a basic overview and you know let you guys know what the different parts are and components to the rig. Uh, Hey, it's another great day in Texas. So check it out. This is a Frigidaire 11,000 BTU unit, okay? And below it is a uh, LG, that's a 23,000 BTU unit. So BTU units are uh, the measure for, um, for heat, okay? And my goal, one of, the, one of those things that I wanted to do was I wanted to maintain temperature control. And, and one of those things that is required is enough BTUs. Now I could have gone and uh, done a, uh, the traditional home AC unit, but remember, I wanted to do it for my house and I didn't really feel like busting out my uh, mother's concrete on the side wall because resale value and other variable things. I wanted it to be scalable, so if I wanted to do it at another person's house, I could do it. So that's why I chose these things. You know, Home Depot. This is uh, these things run 24/7, 365, month two. Not a, um, right now. You can see that I got the heater on it because when it drops to 30 degrees down in the Texas Plains, uh, that that uh, condenser coil freezes because it gets too cold. Hey, how, much, how much can we get sorry, these for? Evaporator. How much can we get these uh, for? 300, 500. Okay, now now here's the really important part. You know, you think, hey, just let me slap this to the side of the box, okay? And we'll call it a day, right? No. What you gotta do is, these are called, hey, and hey, if I say it wrong, don't, don't light me up about it, okay? But I think they're called Pentium boxes. Plentium boxes. I'm not sure. Penny, plentium boxes. And they, these goal, the goal of these boxes, are to direct the hot air coming through, send it through the evaporator cooler, cool the air, and send it back on the. These pipes go up, and and it sends it to the bottom of the casing that I'm about to show you guys. Okay. Um, and so one, two. They're bigger. One, one's, one's bigger than the other, whatever. Uh, in, a, in a later video, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you guys about the rules uh, and the physics behind, um, you know, how many holes need to be drawn and the surface area rules that are involved so that you don't restrict any airflow and your, your, uh, your HVAC unit performs at optimum levels. Uh, Insulated piping, okay. Uh, in the summer, these things will sweat really, will really sweat. So, insulated piping, Home Depot, no problem, all day, every day. Um, come over here. So, what I did over here is uh, some electrical work. Um, we'll get into that later. And then each one is protected with a power surge, and each one of these have a TP link so that with my phone, if I see that one of my rigs are down, I can just go to the CASA app, pop it open, and select which rig is down by looking at the Ethos stats panel. I'm uh, a big Ethos miner. I think that their system is great. I have no bias towards one or the other. Uh, my my main goal is, is consistency and uh, stability. And these guys, run a very stable program. I very rarely have any problems with their software. I uh, actually no, I haven't had one. Um, so, hey, come check this out. This is the coolest part. This is why there's all this piping and stuff. What does that say right there? 63 degrees. All right, I maintain temperature control. You guys want to see what's under the hood? This is where the magic happens. Look, I got one, two, three, four, and then a second layer to make eight. I have uh, 48 GPUs in this box, okay? This material right here that you see, I'm, hey, 
I'm a, uh, in my other life, I'm a commercial roofer and uh, Onyx Construction, DFW Roofing. I work with a man named Jeff Rogers. We are the best in the business. Jeff Rogers worked for one of the largest roofing companies in America. And me and him are business partners. I've never seen anybody get a roof done better than he does. I'm learning from him. So uh, if you guys need a roof, hit me up. What's your phone number? Uh, no, no, no. We don't need none of that shit. Um, so, uh, oh, this, this, this material right here, it's two and a half inch ISO board, okay? This has an R value of, um, I want to say six, but don't quote me on it. I'll, 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 I'll make the correct statement in the video. And, you know, uh, uh, a do for next time type of thing that I want to do, because, hey, you got to remember that when I start, first started um, in the, uh, with, with the challenge of cooling these rigs, it was uh, July in Texas, okay? Texas heat, July. Man, it was hot, okay? So, and I'm, and I'm thankful for that because when it was really hot here in August, this garage will heat up to about, you know, it's 100 degrees outside. It's about 110 without proper ventilation. So I have this summer to uh, pop a vent up, no big deal. I'll need about 2,500 CFMs to crank it out of here. No big deal. But it, but even without that fan, it's just a nice necessity so I can come out here and not sweat so much. Uh, it's it's a uh, without the fan, it was able to hold the temperature. These rigs with these guys on was able to hold a temperature of about 70 to 75 degrees. And keep in mind, it was about 110 degrees uh, outside. So 7510 that's a pretty good insulation but if we could do better that's what we want because what if it's 110 degrees out and we can get these guys running at 60 degrees that's what I like because another one of the things that I was searching in in uh, you know my, when I was thinking about how I'm going to build this rig setup is that I want longevity okay it can't it can't be 110 degrees outside in my 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 ethostat panel temperatures are all red and amber red. We can't, that's not efficient, okay? They need to be all green, and hey, if you're good, you'll get them to the blues. Your numbers will read blue on the ethostat panel. So uh, I ran out of each rig, also, what I did was I ran a, a USB extension and an HDMI extension cord so that when I'm rebooting, <laughs> hey, nothing fancy here. But it does the job, okay? High speed, low drag. High speed, low drag. That's what we're going for, okay? So I have each one of my rigs labeled A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. Because sometimes you'll do repairs and you'll replace the rig. So, so your rig number and your slot on the in the house can't be the same. They're two different numbers or else you'll get really confused, especially with eight. Um, so... It really helps to, if you, if you come, hey Matt, come take a look, come take a look. Uh, see how these are labeled H and, 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 and G? Guys, hey, I can't tell you how much time this has saved me doing this. When, when you're doing it with more than four, more than five rigs, and you're diagnosing problems, and you're trying to get everything up and running, this saves so much time. USB extension cord, HDMI extension cord, and then you connect all the cords right here like this. Okay? So much time. I can I can get this whole thing up and running in less than 10 minutes if I need to do a full restart. Because believe me, when you're trying to get this rocket pumping and the thrusters moving, there's a lot of technical difficulties, okay? <laughs> It takes a lot of work to get all rockets 100%. But uh, hey, it's fun. It is fun. I'll tell you something that this is the funnest thing I've ever done in my entire life. Uh, so, uh, hey, guys, this is my setup. Those are the basics behind it. Uh, Texas Miner. If you guys 
Hey, if you guys liked the video, go ahead and give me a like below. If you didn't like it, hey, no problem. Shoot, shoot your comment. Let me know what I can do better next time, okay? Uh, I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.